Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman Wargamer. It's an open the box and it's another in the series Not a Wargame Wednesday and it's big and it's heavy and it's Shadows of Brimstone, City of the Ancients, a game by Jason C. Hill and published by Flying Frog Productions. This is the revised edition and it's an Old West horror board game for one to four players ages 15 and up. And if memory serves, I think in the earlier edition, it was ages 12 and up. So what's all this about? It is the mid 1880s in the Southwest United States. The small mining town of Brimstone has struck it rich when they discovered large deposits of a new precious mineral called dark stone up in the hills. It has magical properties, is rarer than gold, and is incredibly dangerous. In a flash, the town of Brimstone is consumed, the epicentre of a cataclysmic supernatural explosion, ripping open portals to other worlds down in the mines, and unleashing a great darkness to spread across the land. Now hordes of demons pour from the mines to ravage the countryside, and the sky grows black with swarms of nightmarish creatures. A few brave souls step forward and form a posse of heroes to hold back the darkness. So, Shadows of Brimstone is a fast-paced, cooperative dungeon crawl board game set in the Old West and mixed with unspeakable horror. Each player creates a character, taking on the role of a classic Western hero archetype, such as a bandido, US marshal, gunslinger, or saloon girl. Forming a posse of heroes, the players take their characters down into the mines in the foothills surrounding the demonically overrun town of Brimstone. The heroes can embark on a variety of different missions, from finding and sealing a gateway to another world, to rescuing a farmer's son who was hauled off in the night by a horrible creature. The heroes explore a dynamically generated mine, overcoming dangerous encounters and fighting savage creatures, while collecting up useful gear and ancient artefacts to help them during their adventures. Heroes can even find portals to other worlds, stepping through to continue their adventures on the other side. Hero characters can be kept from game to game in a campaign system, earning experience and going up in levels to increase their skills and gain new abilities. The heroes can also visit local frontier towns between adventures, spending hard-earned loot and resupplying for the next mission. So load up your six-shooter, throw on your hat and poncho and gather the posse. The darkness is coming and all hell's about to break loose in the shadows of Brimstone. Players 1 to 4, ages 15 plus, game time 90 to 180 minutes, and there's even a CD soundtrack included. Here's some examples of the characters and the monsters we'll face, and some of the dungeon tiles and cards here, and here are the contents, and there's a load of it, so we'll have a look at that in a minute. Okay, let's get the shrink wrap off. The shrink wrap is off, so let's open the box. And as there's quite a lot of stuff in this box, I think we'll quickly show you them as we empty the box and then have a look at them in detail. So the first thing are the minis. Now I haven't painted a mini in many a year, so that means I'm going to have to dust off my paints and paint some minis, so there's quite a few of those. There we go. And then there's an assembly guide showing you how to put these together. So that will be handy.
little product catalog from Flying Frog Productions showing you all their wares. And here we've got the adventure book and the rule book. Three decks of cards. pile of player aids. We'll have a look at those. What's this? <laughs> That's the CD. So atmospheric music to play while you're playing the game. A bag of D6s. A D8, and this I believe is the Peril die. These are the monsters. So we'll have a look at those and the characters by the look of it. And hidden under here... ...are the sheets of tokens and dungeon tiles. Right, let's have a proper look at everything. So the first thing we'll have a look at is the rule book. And it is, as I mentioned earlier, the revised edition. This comes in at, well, it's gonna be 40 pages with the back page. So full colour, glossy paper, game contents and the components, lots of pictures, the cards and card types, the hero sheets, the enemy record sheets and the reference cards and the map tiles which are huge. Here it's explaining the hero character cards, the classes that you can pick for your hero, how to set the game up, your first game, the depth track, yes, this moves along and if it gets to here I believe the game is over, explaining the game turn, breaking that down, Exploration, winning and losing. Darkness and the growing dread. Health, sanity and corruption. How to heal. Random heroes, encounters and skill tests. Gear and artifacts. Dark stone icons. Trading items, item upgrades. Side bag, enemies, what all that means is explained here, combat or fights, goes into that, how the enemy moves, how the enemy attacks, Status effect markers and then advanced rules, which are always good to sort of pep up the game once you've played it a few times. Gates to another world, other worlds. There we are. Credits here, and on the back, a little reference summary. So, them's the rules. Next is the adventure book. And this is 
63 pages. Now I won't go through everything in here, so I don't spoil it for you or myself. We've got the table of contents again, full colour, lots of pictures. The story of Brimstone. Love the drawings. The map of the uh, the world or this world, if you like, with the ruins of Brimstone there. Missions: How to uh, sort those out, and any special rules linking them together, that sort of thing. How to pick your missions if you wish to do it randomly. And there's the first mission. So there are 12 altogether, I believe. I will just get past those. Oh, yes, here we are. That's the last one. And then after each mission, you will travel back to town to spend your ill-gotten gains and to get resupplied. There is um, expansion just for frontier towns, which looks interesting. So that tells you exactly what you can do. Hero classes and leveling up and upgrades for each of the classes. So those are for the US Marshal, Saloon Girl, Bandido and the Gunslinger. And those are the four heroes we get in the core set. Painted examples of the miniatures. There's the main boss. And uh, enemy overview, giving you some background on those. The other world in this core game is the Targa Plateau. So we've got a little comic strip here about that. You got any more dynamite? <laughs> and then some painting guides. All the heroes and the monsters and then the travel hazard chart i think this is uh, used in between the mine you have just explored and the frontier town mutation chart if you get exposed to too much dark stone there's a chance you can mutate and get things like tentacle arm the third eye mouth grown <laughs> over Glossary of Terms, FAQs, and a different sort of hero reference card there. If you want to photocopy it, some more pictures on the last page. There we go. Lots in there. Next, we've got the four characters that are in this core set we've got the gunslinger showing you all their abilities and their stats starting items but on the other side is the uh, the female version of it so that's the gunslinger us marshal and these stats don't change if you use the other side Saloon girl. We don't have a saloon boy, so we have the piano player. And the bandido. Here are the monsters. Void spiders. So once again... 
all their abilities as stats there. But if you think that's uh, a little bit sort of wishy-washy, you can turn over each one of these and get the brutal side. I wouldn't advise that for the first few games. Tentacles. Stranglers. Good band. Oh no, this is a demon. Mm. Night terrors. Targa pylons. Hmm. We even get a brutal version of those. And the big boss, the Goliath. 18 health. Look. Initiative of two. I think that determines when you get your go. <laughs> 36. Good grief. There's a ton of sort of player aid charts and things. We've got the injury chart. And on the other side, the madness chart. Here's the frontier town card telling you what goes on there. What happens if you stay at the campsite. Town events. Here's the depth event chart. If you throw doubles while rolling on the hold back the darkness, things can happen. And on the other side, we've got the frontier town with all the different places you can go. One of those places, of course, is the saloon. So that tells you what happens there. General store. Frontier outpost. The docks office. So injuries can be healed there. You can treat corruption. And buy some bits and pieces as well. The church. Buy some blessed auras there. Only available for the holy heroes. And you can get rid of madness and actually bring back someone from the dead. And the blacksmith. There we go. Well, have a look at the cards next. There are loads of different types. So we'll quickly go through each pile. Here's a sort of uh, stack of reference cards explaining what certain things are. And that's uh, dynamite bouncing all over the place. And those are double sided. So great for keeping to one side to remind you what things do. Each Hero or class can choose one of three abilities. So we've got them for all the different characters. Bandido, Saloon Girl, and the Marshal. And here are the personal items that each character or hero can have. 
and I understand these can't be stolen, lost or sold. So loads of those. Starting gear. Somebody's got to have the lantern, I understand, to light the way. I think these are, yeah, specific to certain characters. There we go. Dynamite satchel. You can search the mine and you might find something. There we go. Loot cards. So you can find dark stone. Grabbing gear cards. What's this? Coins, blood money, loads of different stuff. Here's some gear. So, all the usual crew there, bandages, dynamite, whiskey, and some other weird bits and pieces. So I won't show you them all, just to give you an idea. Here are the encounters that can occur in the mine. Many and varied. Again, I'll keep them and show them all. Because I want it to be a surprise, as you do, I suppose. But there we are, lots of them. And encounters when you travel across to the other world, the Targa Pl Plateau in this case. I'll clear these away, there's still more to go. Each hero has a side bag to store stuff in, so up to five on that side, and seven on that side. It's an upgrade. Here's the map deck for the mine. So you pick from this every time you go to an unexplored part, draw one of these randomly, and place it down. This is where your encounters will take place. And if you get to the other world, and for this core game it's the Targa Plateau, you can take one of these to see where you're going with that one. Because as you'll see, the mine tiles are double-sided. On the other side are these. You might be lucky enough to find some artifacts in the mine. These are weird and wonderful items. <laughs> Three-eyed skull. Or in the other world itself. There's a threat deck, and this is split into low, medium, high, and epic. And depending on what level you are or how many heroes you have, dictates which ones of these you will use. So these are the <laughs> quite uh, nasty, 
but down here shouldn't be too bad to get your first few combats under your belt. Darkness cards, these are not nice. And hopefully when we do a playthrough you'll see how these are used. A couple of world cards. Now as you buy expansions for different other worlds you will get the world cards so you can use them to pick maybe the other world you are visiting. Do that randomly or look through them. There's the mines and so no special effects. And here's our one. The Targa Plateau shows you what applies when you're in that other world. Growing Dread. Oh, I won't show you these. We want them to be a surprise. But there we are, quickly go through them. Some other world threats. So, enemies specific to this world. So, snow terrors, target pylons, ancient spiders, and a wandering enemy. That's it. Cool. What a load of cards. You get a handful of red and white D6s. A D8. And this little cool looking dice, which I believe is called the Peril Dice, which only goes from three to six. Next, nine. Yes, I said nine sheets of counters and tiles. So here's the first one. Nice thick card. Looks like they're going to punch very easily. So we've got our wounds, sanity, other bits and pieces here. And on the other side, just to show you, there we go. Here's the second one. We've got mine tile on here. This is the starting one, I believe. Some grit, dark stone stuff, corruption. There's the depth track. I've got to be careful because they're popping out. And on the other side, here's the other world starting tile. Some more mine tiles. The art on these is really rather good. Some lantern tokens there. And on the other side, is the other world. Yet more mine tiles. And some more tokens. Sorry about the glare there. bandages and whatnot. That one. Here's that six shooter template. A 
and the different types of shot. Last one. Cool. There we go. That's all your cardboard. Next, we'll open up and have a quick look at the miniatures. Here we go. Sculpts are not too bad. And of course, some stands for them. Here's the main boss, the Goliath, I think. And the stand. Yeah, the sculpts don't look too bad at all. See how they uh, paint up. Last one. And of course, there stands. That's your lot. So this has been an open the box and I can barely get it on the table. An unboxing of Shadows of Brimstone, City of the Ancients, a game designed by Jason C. Hill and published by Flying Frog Productions. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and it was of interest. If it was, and you did, and you haven't done so already, it would be great if you would consider subscribing to the channel, especially now I'm doing these non-war game unboxings and playthroughs. Besides, it really does help the channel. Push the like button of this video as well. That also helps tremendously. And if you want to be informed of other content the channel uploads, well, push the bell. Leave a comment. I'm looking forward to getting this on the table. I know there's loads of expansions, but do you play it? What do you think? Let me know. I love to read them. And one last thing, thank you to those that continue to put up with my nonsense my lovely subscribers. Thank you very much indeed. So until next time, as always, you take care and goodbye.